today we have the modern Krumlauf. Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House up in Maine taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming Fall of 2017 firearms auction. And this is the Colt M31, M231 port firing weapon. And uh, as I suggested, this is really the modern take on the German Krumlauf. The Krumlauf was the curved barrel attachment for the Sturmgewehr. And uh, in one of its incarnations, it was designed so that you could actually mount it in an armored vehicle. And uh, in that case, you would actually have the barrel going through the floor or the, the top of the vehicle and then curving 90 degrees horizontal so you could shoot guys who are trying to climb on the vehicle. This is kind of the same thing for, but developed for the Bradley M2 fighting vehicle uh, development program. The idea was they wanted, the Bradley was supposed to be a troop carrying vehicle and so they decided they needed some way for guys inside the vehicle to be able to shoot at guys on the outside of the vehicle. Why exactly they weren't willing to just do this with your inside the vehicle troops standard combat rifles is not clear to me. Uh, in 1974 there was a developmental trial held between an early version of this uh, and an HK-33, an M3A1 grease gun, and a standard M16A1 rifle. And somehow this came out on top. Now before you ask, this is more than just a standard AR-15 with some weird furniture on it. Uh, this has actually been substantially modified. So this is, it fires from an open bolt only, it has a completely different recoil system, it has a completely different fire control system. It runs at 11 to 1200 rounds per minute, which is insanely fast for an M16. Uh, and this was designed to only fire with, well, to be fired with M196 tracer ammunition because it also has no sights, uh, it has no stock, and it is purely meant to thread into the firing port on an M2 Bradley and shoot people at very close range and very high speed. Uh, interestingly, they initially uh, issued these with a collapsing wire stock, pretty similar to a grease guns, and a very rudimentary set of sights, and found, rather quickly, found that the gun was so difficult to control and fire effectively from the shoulder that rather than even try to fix it or try to train around it, what they did was simply remove the sights and the stock and decree that you weren't allowed to take these out of the Bradleys. That was the solution to it being too difficult to fire effectively. Now, I make this sound like it's all bad. Well, these are really cool guns. They're really quite scarce on the civilian market. And, um, and they're really a very different take on the AR-15. So let's take this one apart and let me show you how the mechanicals are actually different in it. We've got some basic Colt markings here on the right side of the receiver, uh, but of course that's not the interesting side. That is the interesting side. Note the M231 marking there. It is a U.S. government property, or was a U.S. government property rifle, serialized, all that good stuff. Back here you can see we have a very non-standard fire control group. Uh, this is full auto only. There is no semi-auto mechanism to it. And uh, it's an open bolt gun with a totally different fire control system than a standard rifle. Before we go any farther, let me just quickly demonstrate the manual of arms here. Uh, it's an open bolt gun, so you have to lock it open first. Snap the charging handle back. It is now ready to fire. It has an extremely heavy trigger pull. Uh, that fires the gun. And then you will very quickly empty your magazine of ammunition. Now this does have a hold open for the mag. What is interesting here is that the magazine hold open is located slightly behind the sear hold open. So once you have locked open on an empty magazine, you then actually have to hit the bolt release to allow the bolt to drop forward from the magazine stop to the sear, which you can see right there. Now the bolt is being held by the sear, I can now insert another magazine and fire again. Colt's light machine gun had the same sort of potential issue, but they actually resolved it on that design by integrating uh, the magazine release and the bolt release together so that when you release the magazine, you simultaneously and automatically dropped the bolt from the magazine catch down to the sear. Okay, and a quick look at the, uh, the rest of the outside of the gun actually, I suppose. We have a, a pretty basic birdcage flash hider out here. Relatively heavy barrel. This thing comes in at eight and a half pounds, so it's really 
the same weight or maybe more than a standard M16 of the time. Uh, we have this odd, well, different furniture. It is a round handguard, does have heat shields in there, uh, and then this is has this coarse threading to thread into the Bradley firing port uh, ball pintle. There is no provision whatsoever for sights. The casting for the upper receiver has some of the markings for the sights, but none of that was ever drilled. Rear sight was never put in. There's no, uh, no accommodation for a front sight post. Uh, these were, as I said, just to be fired with tracer. Uh, aim, <laughs> aim using the pretty much solid streak of tracer uh, red that you would get from 11 or 1200 rounds per minute. And then we have this non-standard short buffer tube. So disassembly is going to begin by unscrewing this and releasing the recoil spring. It will push out a little bit, but it's not under a ton of pressure. There we go. Now that is not a standard AR-15 buffer. This is actually three recoil springs nested on each other because it takes that much recoil spring to absorb all of the, uh, the energy of what is, well, it's not an unlocked gun, but uh, there's not nearly as much length of travel on this thing as there is in a standard M16. Once we have the recoil spring out, then we can push the two takedown pins, pull those out, and then we can separate the upper and the lower. There we go. The bolt comes out like a standard AR-15. The charging handle is actually completely normal. And then we have our empty upper receiver. So there is the M231 port firing weapon stripped down. I think most of the interesting things to look at are going to be here in the lower. As I mentioned earlier, the fire control group is completely different than a standard AR-15 or M16. Instead of having a hammer at all, it now just has a sear, like a typical open bolt submachine gun. Pulling the trigger pushes the front of the sear up, which pulls the back of the sear down. When it's in firing position, the sear is locking on this little notch in the bottom of the bolt carrier like that, holding it in place, and when you pull the trigger, the bolt can now slide freely forward like that, being pushed by its recoil springs. This leads to it uh, having a really, really stiff trigger because when you pull the trigger, you're having to slide this down against a lot of spring tension uh, on the bolt. The front end here is the same though. The magazine release and the, uh, the, the magazine hold open and the bolt release, those are all uh, identical components. The lower receiver itself is the same with the exception of different holes being drilled to properly mount all of these different parts. The buffer tube is uh, obviously different, uh, and it has these uh, knurled catches in the back because it has a detent in the back of the spring guide right there, which prevents it from rotating once it's locked in place. Typically in an open bolt only machine gun, the firing pin will be fixed uh, to automatically protrude and fire when the bolt closes. Uh, in this case, in order to not modify that part of the M16 system, this has a standard firing pin, but there is, of course, no hammer and no hole for it. Instead, this, uh, the recoil springs nest inside this, and this acts as the striker, which hits the firing pin. So once the bolt is locked in battery like this, then when the, the whole system goes forward, that goes forward, and the firing pin protrudes from the bolt face, like so. Reset it there, and when I close that, there's the firing pin. Uh, notice that there's no forward assist. There are no ratchet uh, catches on the, the bolt carrier for a forward assist because, of course, this is an open bolt gun. So a forward assist would not only be useless, it would actually be totally counterproductive. Well, from the perspective of looking at unusual firearms variations, the M231 port firing weapon is very cool because it gives us this neat look at how you can take the, the skeleton of an AR-15 and radically change it to meet a totally different set of design goals. From the perspective of military procurement or logistics, however, uh, one really does have to wonder how this thing got through the whole process without someone just 
pointing out that it's a lot easier to simply use the almost identical style of uh, weapons that the guys inside the armored fighting vehicle already have on them. Now, I, I suspect we will not be seeing a whole lot of future uh, procurement or development or uh, deployment of guns like the M231. Well, in total, 27,000 of these were ordered in 1979 from Colt for, uh, well, as part of the M2 Bradley procurement program. Uh, they were not available on the civilian market, of course, as an open bolt rapid, I mean, this is a very specialized weapon for an armored fighting vehicle. So they weren't something that was of any interest to the general public at the time. They are, of course, very interesting to AR-15 and Colt and American military firearms collectors because they really are, as you saw, a substantial variation on the regular M16 platform. So uh, pretty rare to find one that is transferable like this. If you're interested in having it yourself, of course, it is coming up for sale here. So take a look at the description text below and you'll find a link to uh, Julia's catalog page on this one where you can see their photographs, their description, their provenance and all that sort of stuff. And if you're interested, you can place a bid right through the website. Thanks for watching.